Hello and welcome to another video. Today we have an Asus Strix 270F Gaming. This time not an AM4 board like we have most of the time. This board came to me for no boot and uh, the owner said he doesn't know what could be wrong with this board. But um, upon very first inspection I already see a problem which is we have damage in the CPU socket. As you can already see by the light reflection we have some pins that are different than the others. So, we are not going to do any measurements, not going to plug a CPU in there and going to see what kind of problem it has, but we're first going to go under the CPU socket, under the microscope, and we're going to see what we need to fix. And now we are under our microscope, and we can already see the very first problem is this shiny pin right here. This pin looks to be okay, but it is probably bent downwards. So it needs to be lifted a little bit and it should be around here. So this one was just a little bit pushed into the ground, but we have the next problem at the top right there. This one is a little bit harder to see. This is this pin, as you can see, it is tilted to this side. So we're going to grab this pin and we're going to bend it backwards and I need a little bit more and now we are good the way I try to do it is you see by the neighboring pin where the end is and you need to imagine a line that should be that should go ver uh, horizontally like this at the end and you need this line and you need to see that these are aligned with each other. That they are at one point. The same you can do also vertically. This is the way I mostly look at how to flatten out those pins correctly. Or to get them into the uh, right position. There should be some. This one looks different. But everything here looks... Under the microscope it always looks fine, um, because the microscope is not 3D visual, because uh, it's only a single camera looking down. What I would always suggest you to do when you have a problem with the socket, you um, let's switch to the camera so you can see that better, what I'm doing. What I'm doing is, I know there's my microscope, but you need to take the board and see where the light refract reflection hits differently on the board. And that always helps to make out which pins are different than others. And I still, still can see some. So let's go under microscope uh, again. And let's see here in the top left. There's one pin that is shining very differently, but I can't make out why. Just like this pin. But it looks well aligned. Let's do it like this. You probably can see the shine as well. There's something reflective about it. In between there. There's something reflective that I cannot tell you what that is. Let's see from the flat down view again. Okay, let's move on. Let's see if I can if we can find anything else that's looking off. And I cannot see any pins right now that are looking off anymore. Which is a good sign because this was rather minimal damage. There was no pins knocked off or like bent completely backwards like it op or often happens. I'm going to have a quick look myself again. And so, I did see some more damage in the, uh, in the socket, but nothing that looked like it need to be adjusted because um, you will never get it perfect anyways. You will never get them aligned as they were before. But I think they were good enough in a case where they weren't touching um, each other and where none of them were like bent backwards or bent too much to the side or something like that. So I've inserted a, G a CPU into here. This is a G4400. This is a 6th gen Celeron, I think. 
I have one stick of DDR4 RAM. We have a DDR tester. In the bottom right here, which you can't see, there I have the postcard plugged into a TPM header. And in the bottom right, as you can see uh, right there in the bottom right, or just to show it here, we have our consumption. And now let's see. We have 1.3 amps. That is very bad. That is very, very odd. Why is that such a high current consumption? That's way too much. I think getting hot. I'm quickly doing just a quick test for myself with my fingers. Like I go, went around the, um, the Super IO. Let's see if I unplug this. No, still. Still the same. Interesting. The power consumption is rapidly changing. This is very odd. I'm trying to find out if anything is getting warm just by my fingers. I think the PCH might be heating up. Um, I don't think this is going to be a good idea to try to turn this on. But I think we are just going to try it anyways and see if anything happens. Let's see. So, the power consumption is one of the factors where I would instantly say something is wrong about this board. Yep, and we have we have no startup. So, no reaction to the power button, which is uh, as to be expected, to be perfectly honest. Because that's way too high of an amperage draw for being in standby. If we take the processor out, as you can see, the power consumption still remains. Let's try some things. To be very sure, the DDR also didn't make any difference. Just like the tester probably won't make a difference if we take this out. I'm kind of interested how this board behaves as uh, if you if we go for PS on, if we force this to turn on. It takes 1.4 amps. PCH gets very hot. Interesting. What I think we need to do is to take some measurements around the PCH, and let's see if we can get anything out of that. Let's turn off the power supply because there's a lot of power going into the board. And I'm going to quickly disassemble the board and then we're going to see each other again. And now I've removed the heatsink. As you can see, we have our exposed PCH. What we're going to do now, we're going to take our multimeter. And now with our multimeter, we're going to go into resistance mode. Let's take our black probe probe it onto ground. We're going to go onto here. This should be the supply for the PCH. And it's dead. <laughs> well then, um, yeah, pretty sure. Because um, this the inductor is right where the PCH is supposed to be. Sometimes you have the PCH voltage in this area right here. And sometimes it's under here. In this area, this in this case, it's here in the bottom right. There's an inductor, and um, yep, that's that's the output of it. It's zero ohms. Um, because this is on the output, I'm pretty sure it's not the chip that is actually faulty, but the PCH itself. Um, let's go under the microscope if you can see anything in special, and we're going to test the small little capacitors on the PCH itself. And now we can see our PCH. I don't see any obvious cracks or anything like that. But what you can see in the bottom right corner, it looks kind of like it might be chipped. The way that the reflection hits differently. The compound looks okay, but it, the chip itself looks like it's been touched before. So someone was probably here already before. And now let's find a position where we can check some of that capacitors. You have my multimeter in the bottom right where normally the power supply is. Let's take our probes and see. Yeah, straight zero. Straight up zero. Yup. Well, sadly, this is going to be the end of this main board because that PCH is nothing really I can fix here.
And um, that is that PCH is often even not economical to replace. That's very interesting that it happened on a Z270 because I had multiple Z270s I already fail exactly this way where the PCH is dead. So this sadly is not the first time. But what you can do, the problem is you can't get these chips new. These chips are always harvested from other boards. So getting one of these chips where you know that they are known good is very, very hard because you have to take them off of different boards and you don't know how the other person would have taken the chip off if you applied enough heat, too little heat, whatever, if the chip is actually still working. And then you also have to take this one off, uh, prepare the pads and put another one on. And I, I can do that with my tools. I just have a hot air station. I'm thinking about getting a station where I can actually do proper BGA and with socket replacements, but that is something for the future. Sadly, as of right now, this is a no-fix, and this will be going to the stash that I have with dead PCHs. I actually have multiple mainboards that have dead PCHs, where at some point I might fix them, or I will just harvest components from this board like this board has many good components this has the whole vrm that you can take stuff from you have the super air where you can take stuff from add and so on and so forth so there's a lot of things that you could harvest from this board and make it a donor board because the thing is this board is not worth that much it's a z270 it's sixth and seventh intel um intel generation there is not too much interest for this board and replacing the PCH is quite some work for this. So, sadly we couldn't fix this one, but I, uh, I was able to show you how it looks like if, if you have a dead PCH, how that looks like. Sadly, all the work that we have done to the socket was for nothing, but what you can do, because I, I've thought in the first place that we only have socket damage, but as it turns out, we also uh, have the PCAH shorted. So, thank you very much for watching. Hope you still enjoyed this diagnostic video, even though we couldn't repair it. So, thank you very much for watching. Hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. I'd like to see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.